It's cooked. Just checking. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday morning and we're gonna vlog today. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and every Monday, we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch, where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time I had time for a shower but not a hairdo, you'll be alerted to it. So good morning. It is morning. Saturday. Saturday we, in the house. We've spent the week trying to get back on track, right? trying to catch up. I totally lost my bearings with all of this traveling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've just been trying to kind of reclaim my house, you know, because when you're like packing and then leaving, things just sort of pile up. Mm -hmm. I mean, not my laundry. I've gotten on top of my laundry, but you know, just putting things away where they're actually supposed to go. Right. A little bit challenging. So I've been purging. Everybody's holding on to their precious things because mom's coming through with like a donation bag. So it's like, look out. I get that look of determination on my face. Right. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of vlogging today. What I eat in a day kind of thing after beef, butter, bacon, and egg. I like well, beef, butter, bacon, and egg pretty much. <laughs> I know, but we like beef, butter, we bacon, do. and egg. That's what we've discovered. We have a little bit of difference here. So I've got a couple of eggs. That what I did was, there's no bacon. I mean, there's bacon, but it's all frozen because right. everything was, we were traveling. So it was in the freezer. It's not defrosted. So what I did was I have those bacon crumbles that I buy every once in a while from like Costco. I don't like to buy them because they're expensive, um, but they're good for a quick thing, especially if you're making like a chicken salad or an egg salad and you mm -hmm. want to have bacon in there like I do. So what I did was I put them on the Blackstone and warmed them up and then... I took the eggs, I put them on there, and then I sprinkled them within the egg. It is good that way. And then this here is shaved beef. Which I am all about. Anthony and I recently went out to lunch at a place that did like a shaved beef salad. And it was $10 and you got like a ton of shaved beef. I thought it was really, really delicious. Well, we got this at Sam's Club, I think. I think it was Sam's Club. It's just a uh, Philly Gourmet Club Pack, 100% pure beef. It's sliced steaks. And what happens is they just come in these little slicings. So it's like the old fashioned steakums and you just pull it apart. They heat up super quick and you can just like put them on. I put them on the Blackstone. They're great for Philly cheesesteaks. But what's nice about these is the ingredients, beef. That's it. There's no like maltodextrin or any of that kind of stuff in here, just beef. So 130 calories for a portion. 11 grams of fat, 7 grams of protein. So it's it's a higher fat beef, which is even better. I'm not upset and, about that. Um, I use like three slivers. So it's like six pieces total. And just put in a little bit of salt with some butter on there. So our coffee is uh, 20 ounces of coffee a piece. Uh, I made this in the uh, grind control or grind and brew, whatever it's called, coffee maker. Mmm, so good. And then I think it's one of the clout coffees. It's like peanutty. Yeah, well, I added this into there. So one scoop of this prime that protein. That will do that. Peanut butter. This is a brand new flavor. I'll leave a link for it down below. Uh, we have a coupon code. It's two crazy ketos. Really tasty. I don't know if it gets you 10 or 15% off. One of the two. I don't know. But here's the cool thing. Ingredients per scoop. Four ounces of grass-fed beef, peanuts, sea salt, stevia. Does say other ingredients is grass-fed beef protein, peanut flour powder, sea salt natural flavor, organic acacia fiber, and stevia. So not a lot of ingredients. So if you don't like milk protein or mm -hmm. whey protein isolate. Beef uh, protein. The, the prime proteins are all good. They're made with beef protein. Uh, I will say you really need to have like a blender to use the equip. Yeah. Because it doesn't have a whole bunch of stuff to really help it to emulsify. 
And so I find if I just put it like in a shaker bottle, it clumps It's gonna up. clumpy. But once you put it, cause you definitely put this in the blender. Yeah. I mean, it's super smooth. So yeah, blender. Okay, so, and also, so for this one scoop is 100 calories. It says less than one gram of fiber, 20 grams of protein. Um, it also has 465 milligrams of sodium, 480 milligrams of chloride. The only thing is- It has to have a carb because of the peanuts. It, that's, this is a complaint that I do have with them is they don't put it on the label because they don't have to. I'm losing my towel, Because it's dude. like a nutritional supplement. But, uh, so it doesn't list how much fat, which there has to be a little bit of fat because peanuts. And it has to have a little bit of carbs because peanuts. So I'm going to tell you it's probably like one, maybe two carbs for a serving. And then, but again, it's got less than one gram of dietary fiber and probably a couple of grams of fat, but unfortunately they don't tell you on here, but I do really like it regardless because at least I know it's clean ingredients. Yeah. So uh, the rest of the day we have our supporter live stream. I'm so excited. We're gonna do, um, I got some editing of videos. We're editing the final day or the coming home day. I need to order food for the baby shower. Oh yeah, that's next week. Next week. Are you excited? I'm really excited, but I'm still nervous because Why? I've never thrown a shower before. You're a party planner. Yeah, but for children. I mean, I don't <laughs> think she wants a bouncy castle at the baby shower. Like that could be dangerous. You're gonna do great. Thank what are we you. having? A girl. No, Her name's what, Peyton. What are we having for food for the baby shower? I am going to be going to Publix and getting a variety of trays. I love the fact that just because we're keto doesn't mean it has to be inconvenient. I can leverage, you know, platters and things. In fact, a lot of the platters you get at Sam's Clubs and BJ's and stuff, you know, meat platters and cheese and like everything for like a charcuterie board, which is super in now. Mm -hmm. I see all of these very elaborate boards all over the place where people are doing like the entire table and right. all kinds of stuff. So it's like, we're in, we're cool right now. It's like, this is a good time in the world to be bald, right? right. Because there's a lot of bald guys and we and we celebrate that. Well, it's, it's good to throw parties and be keto yeah. because people are prepared for especially that kind of food yeah so we're keeping all of the food for the baby shower mostly keto because i don't think anybody's going to complain about meat platters and cheese and salad and things like that right and then um the mom to be has requested some fried chicken so we are going to have a little bit of fried chicken mostly for her and then uh, we're not even doing a cake or cupcakes, right? We're doing one thing that everybody has requested. What is it? Like a cookie or something, right? Right. And that's a favor mm -hmm. that like we're passing out. But it's like a cookie that's this big from like some fancy cookie place. And then other than that, the dessert that we're giving, putting out, is going to be keto chow pudding. fluff. Yeah, pudding. Like pudding fluff. Oh, and we're, we're having fruit and then... We're gonna make, I'm gonna make a bunch of yogurt yeah. and we're gonna put that out there because nobody's gonna complain make a parfait. about that yogurt. You can make your own parfait. And then we're gonna put out a bunch of chocolate zeros and stuff as chocolate. So uh, keeping it pretty keto friendly so it doesn't really matter. And there's nothing in there that I have to worry about. Like, ooh, somebody who's not keto, you know, can't have this. I mean, right. Nobody's gonna grab yogurt if they have, for example, a, da a dairy allergy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and if somebody can't have like a cashew right. or a walnut or something like that. Yeah, we're not making any kind of almond flour desserts. Nothing is hiding. Right. You know, so I think we'll be good. Are you struggling with your towel? I am, I wanna go do my hair. Okay, we're gonna finish eating. We'll show you what's going on throughout the day. Ooh, I look like a weirdo, but that's okay. I am heading over to Publix to place my order for the food for the baby shower. And I'm really excited that even though I'm throwing a keto friendly baby shower, I can still have convenience, right? I don't have to make a whole bunch of, of food in order for me to enjoy a keto friendly baby shower. I'm just going to buy party platters and there's a lot of perfectly keto party platters out there. So I'm going to buy a big giant um, thing of rolled up lunch meat. I'm going to buy a, a big party platter of cheese. I'm gonna get a big vegetable platter. I'm going to buy a big fruit platter to go with Joe's big vat of yogurt that he's making. I'm gonna get some uh, keto granola. 
and also have some nuts there so people can make their own parfaits. I think that'll be fun. I'm going to be bringing keto chow fluff that they usually sample at different conferences because it's delicious and also beautiful. We're gonna be having raspberry cheesecake and we're going to be having pistachio and I got pretty little containers to make individual servings of that and we will top it with some sugar-free whipped cream. So I think that we'll have a really nice spread for people to enjoy. No, there's not gonna be a cake and there's not going to be cupcakes there. And I'm okay with that because we're gonna have so much quantity of delicious food there and we're only gonna be there for two hours that I feel like we gonna get away with this. We're gonna show people that you can have a beautiful baby shower without a bunch of sugar, right? So we can celebrate things without sugar. We will have some Chalk Zero candy there to, to spread out, but again, I feel really good about that. I'm, I'm excited. The only request that's not a keto food is uh, fried chicken. Michelle asked for some fried chicken for her baby shower and we are going to answer that request. I don't mind at all having some fried chicken there, so I'm gonna order that too. So we'll have some um, nice chicken, but there's gonna be some salads. I'm gonna have a giant chef salad that I'm ordering, a Mediterranean salad, and we're gonna have a chicken Caesar salad there. So lots of delicious food. I don't have to cook it. It's gonna be super easy for me to throw this party from a food perspective, stay keto, and be able to eat just about everything that I'm paying for. And I love that. So Rachel ran to the store to get stuff for the baby shower and order the food for next week. We're pretty much doing all platters uh, from Publix, mostly keto kind of stuff, or pretty much everything is keto. And uh, I'm excited about that. I'm sure she's gonna show you what she's getting. But while she's doing that, I'm editing the final day of the Keto Palooza vlog. And it's really cool to be like reliving it, watching the wedding over, watching people's stories, interviews. I'll leave a link for that right up here. And while I'm doing that, I'm also listing a bunch of stuff on OfferUp. So whenever I upgrade electronics, maybe upgrade to a newer uh, camera or newer microphones, trying to make things better and better for the channel, I always sell everything that I do have on OfferUp. That's how I'm able to pay for it because I can't just keep buying new electronics. I love OfferUp because you can sell it for close to what you paid for it. You usually get the best value. There's no fees or anything like that. It's not like eBay where they take like 12 or 15% of it. OfferUp's great. And then what I'll do is I'll meet people either in Publix or in Walmart, uh, up by the customer service, or even sometimes at the police station. So by us, the local police station actually has a room where you can do like online kind of exchanges. So it's a really safe way to do it. But yeah, you, all of the stuff I'm selling, like on an old drone, camera lenses, things like that. and. It'll be nice to be able to take that money and then just put it away for when I want to upgrade something else. So these are some of the things that I'm selling. I'm selling a drone with its case, an old camera lens that I don't use anymore. Here's another camera lens that I don't use anymore. Uh, we got a monitor. Uh, we That's from when we first started. I don't really need that anymore because I have a big TV. We've got a microphone, another microphone. And then from my days of playing video games, which I never have time to do anymore, I'm selling a scuff controller. And then we also have a couple of mic stands and some lights. So getting rid of all this stuff will be great because I can number one, get it out of the house. And number two, I can put the money back in the bank. Okay, so I went ahead and placed my order with the deli, super excited. I can just pick that up. Um, the morning of the shower. But while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some sugar-free dipping sauces, barbecue sauce, you know, some ranch, all that kind of good stuff so that we have some things to dip our vegetables in, dip our lunch meat, you know, drizzle across the lunch meat. Um, and I know that everybody can enjoy them and feel safe that it's sugar-free. Okay, day is getting away from us. I just looked up at the clock and it is 4.30 already. I can't believe it's already 4.30. I feel like we just finished the live stream. We're gonna go ahead and start cooking and I'm pretty much gonna do like a big meal prep thing. So I pulled a bunch of stuff out of the freezer. We're gonna put it all on the smoker. We're gonna eat some of it today and then some of it's just gonna be like food that's already cooked and we can eat throughout the next couple of days. So here's what I got. I got a beef tenderloin. This is the other half of the one we prepared so it's all tied up. I've covered the entire thing in the Redmond organic garlic pepper. Uh, it's slightly frozen in the middle, but that's fine. I don't mind putting frozen food in the smoker because it's going to cook perfectly. 
I got a couple of burgers that I pulled out. I'm going to put a little bit more of that Redmond on there. Uh, got a little bit of a pork belly, so we're going to do a small pork belly smoke like a brisket. And then these here are these Kirkland brats. Um, so I had bought these. I think that's Costco. We're going to go ahead and smoke all those up. And we're just going to eat some of this uh, tonight and then the rest tomorrow, Monday. That way I don't have to do a whole lot of cooking over the next few days. Although tomorrow we're going to make chicken wings. I have about, I think it's three pounds of chicken wings. It's three of these packages of the Kirkland Signature uh, Chicken Party Wings. I'd gotten these when they were like on sale, like $5 off a package. So we bought a whole bunch of them. So it does say that there's a uh, serving size is four ounces, but it's three complete packages. So what I do is I put them out on some paper towels like this. And now I'm going to take some more paper towels and I'm going to get these as dry as possible. And then we're going to put a bunch of salt on them and stick them in the refrigerator. Now that I have them dry, I'm going to take some Redmond salt and I'm going to generously cover them all with salt. So what I do is I put it on like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to lay them out on this rack. I'll put the salt side down and then salt the other side. Honestly, it'd be better if I had two sheets, but I only have one right now. So I have them crammed together, but the purpose of this is just to dry them out a little bit. So now that I've got them on there, I'm going to go ahead and put some more salt on. And then we're going to put this in the refrigerator towards the back. And what's going to happen is the skin is going to dry out a little bit. That salt's going to absorb some of the moisture. The refrigerator will help dry them out. And then you're going to get a really crispy chicken skin when I cook them tomorrow. Okay, here's what we got. So we've got some bratwurst, slightly overcooked. A <laughs> uh, couple of hamburgers. The pork belly is still on the oven. <laughs> and, uh, or smoker. Now we're going to go ahead and slice up this tenderloin. Let's take a look at it. Cat's excited. Oh yeah. Looking good. Perfect. There you go. I'm on quality control. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. So tender. Mmm. I love beef. We got some eggs going. We're going to eat in a second. I left the sausages on a little too long. We got mm. busy doing something, but I think it's just like a crispy outside with like a, a delicious inside. It is. It's awesome. It's like mushy on the inside. I love it. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. I like that charred, not like burnt, but charred crispy I, flavor. I always liked my, my hot dogs like crispy crunchy. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? Do you, do you mind having that, that kind of like charcoal on the outside feel to your hot dog our led lights are slowly going out this one's out now that one is going out and they're like gotta get some new ones slowly dimming oh that's so good mm. so a little bit of everything got a couple of eggs one burger just because we had them. Mm -hmm. So uh, not we didn't eat all the tenderloin we ate maybe half of it but we can finish it tomorrow and then also, it's great just sliced beef for whenever. So tomorrow we're gonna have chicken wings. Oh, nice. And then I've already got those all prepared. And the pork belly mm -hmm. is smoking like a brisket right now. So we'll have that. So over the next few days, I don't really have to cook. I wanna try this tenderloin. It's delicious. It's crazy tender. Oh, it's I so mean, good. Tender's in the title, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. Well, I think what we'll do is we will, we're still gonna have a creamy later. Mm -hmm. I made one the other day. It's been so good. We, we've had it in the freezer for three days. We have not had one yet. We're I can't have believe it. And then since we're doing chicken wings tomorrow, do you want to just like continue this tomorrow? Like Let's a do little that. bit of tomorrow. Keep mm -hmm. it short, but we'll show you how we're going to cook the chicken wings and how the pork belly came out. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I just want to taste it. <laughs> the pork belly is done. We're done eating, but Rachel's like, I want fresh. Come on now. How is it? Mm. <laughs> it's perfect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I gotta show you. This is what it looks like. Rachel's wearing her pajamas. Look at how crusty this is. Like, not crusty in a bad way, but crusty in a good. And you don't even need to check the temperature. Here's what you need to do. You take your meat probe and look at how it just slides right in there. That only resistance is getting through the crust. But look at that. But if you are curious about the internal temperature, it is 212 degrees. 
Is it good? Mm, I'm gonna need a minute. We decided not to have it creamy tonight. We're gonna have it tomorrow, but I think you'd rather have this anyway. Good morning. Good morning. We just got home from church. We sure did. Having a little bit of coffee. Cheers. Um, I've got the coconut Nespresso with about a half a tablespoon of heavy cream. You've got some other one that we bought. I don't know. I'm not sharing the coconut one. I was anymore. gonna say I don't I don't taste coconut, but it's delicious. And honestly, it is kind of a dreary day. And when it's like overcast and a little bit drizzly and rainy on a Sunday afternoon, perfect napping weather. And also I just want to hold a hot mug in my hands. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter what flavor of coffee it is. It does have a half a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. Very nice. Uh, so, okay, I have to say something. So our good friend Melissa at church snagged us some t-shirts because every year on the anniversary of Coastal, they do free t-shirts. They do. You have to be there to get your shirt. But we were in Kentucky. No, we were in Tennessee right. when it happened. And so she held us some shirts. And I just have to say, first of all, I like the new design. I do too. I have to say, I don't know what brand this shirt is, but I love it because it makes me feel really skinny because this is a large and like... <laughs> and it's like giant. It's oh. like giant on me. So... I mean, but that's the problem is you have to know clothes size. Like I was talking to somebody recently and we were talking about sizes. Like don't go, use weight, use sizes when you're trying to set your goal. Like find something that barely fits yeah, and have that and then use that because your size can change even though your weight isn't. And this particular person is growing. Right. And I'm like, well, here's the thing is you may not lose any weight but you may grow six inches. And that'll change and your- And you're gonna slim down, right? You'll be in the same exact clothing, but fit, fit completely differently in it. I'll never forget when Caleb was a baby that first year, he was like a sumo wrestler. I mean, he just gained so much weight and had no interest in walking until after his first birthday. And so after, like right at his uh, you know, 12 month mark, he was in 24 month clothes. Opposite of Anthony. Right. Who stayed in a 4T until he was like six years old. Well, once he started walking, he stayed in that same outfit, like those same clothes, like 24 months for a whole nother year. Oh, wow. Because he like slimmed you start down. changing, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to address something uh, real quick. I was going through comments and uh, somebody had asked a question about the meters. Okay. And is there a way to distinguish between like ketosis and like if you drank some whiskey? Oh, all right. And now as far as a breath meter, which is honestly, if you really want to know, Am I in ketosis right now? Am I, or am I in ketogenesis where I am using fat for fuel and I am creating ketones? The best way is using a breath meter, a good breath meter, yeah. which means a couple hundred bucks. Not like Amazon. However, okay. they're very difficult to use because you gotta get a bottom breath. But what happens is when you use a breath meter, it's measuring acetone, which is a direct byproduct from using your fat for fuel but it's in the very bottom of your lungs. So you have to like breathe out and then after you get all the breath out of your lungs, the last drop, that is what needs to go in the meter. So it's like breathe out, don't inhale, and then keep breathing into the meter. That's so it, it's difficult. Also, uh, even with, that, with those acetone, alcohol, it's gonna be the same thing. So if you had a drink, it's going to measure that. So you can't really do that for like a couple of hours after you eat, otherwise it can affect it. With the regards to the blood meters, these are measuring excess ketones in your blood. We've talked about this before, but I, it's, it's really important that it we is. don't live and die by this meter because we can fake the meter. You can fake the meter without even realizing it. So when it comes to alcohol, oxidative priority says that your body burns alcohol first, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's alcohol, then exogenous ketones and ketones, then protein for building, then carbohydrates, then you have body fat, and then you have dietary fat. But don't or dietary go by that. fat, then body fat. Dietary fat, then <laughs> body fat. You're right. Um, but also remember, you need dietary fat to get to the body fat because that's your fuel. Yeah. Problem is, when you drink alcohol, your liver stops everything else. It's no longer going to metabolize fat. It's not even going to metabolize carbohydrates. All of that's going to go right to stored fat for a little while. 
you're also not using your ketones because the first thing it needs to get rid of is alcohol. So let's say you take a measurement on your meter and you, I don't know, say I have a 1.5 ketone reading. You go drink whiskey. Mm -hmm. A couple of hours later, which is zero carb, right? A couple of hours later, you go check your meter. Most likely, it's still 1.5. Right. However, that doesn't mean you're in ketosis and it doesn't mean you're in ketogenesis. If you want to know the difference, ketosis is using ketones for fuel and using fat for fuel. Ketogenesis is creating ketones. Big difference. So if you take exogenous ketones, you are using ketones for fuel, but your body's not creating them. The meter is only going to measure the excess ketones. You're not going to use those ketones because you just drank whiskey and your body is now using the alcohol for fuel. Right. So that's why we don't want to live and die by this. Because again, you're going to say like, oh, I just drank a whole bunch of whiskey and it didn't kick me out of ketosis. Yes, Fine. it did. <laughs> it did. It, regardless of what this meter says, if you drink alcohol, you are not in ketosis or ketogenesis for a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on how much you drink. So just be aware of that. Something to know. Don't live and die by this. You want to know how you know you're using fat for fuel? You don't eat carbohydrates. Right. And you don't drink alcohol. Yeah. That's it, how you know. Exactly. And then you don't have to worry, but this meter means nothing. Right. Unless, I just turned it on, unless you are really trying to do therapeutic keto, like super high ketones, like twos and threes, which you don't need for weight loss, that would be more for like cognitive function or um, epilepsy uh, or like Dr. Chris Palmer talked about if you're trying to work with some different type of mental illnesses, right? that's where you need those really, really, really high ketones. So yeah, don't live and die by the meter. You got a recipe card over there. Are we gonna try that today? Black and white cookies. How hard is that? Well, it, there looks like there's quite a few steps. Oh, I need my glasses to read that. But. I'm kind of excited because I know it's something that you've really missed and wanted to make. Do so. we have the ingredients? So for the cookies, we need a half a cup of butter, so stick of butter. All right. We need allulose, got that. Uh, we need erythritol, got that. We need vanilla, I got that. We need lemon extract, I'm pretty sure I have that. If not, we I'll can skip run to it. the store. Well, or I'll skip it. Okay. Um, that's just to give the cookie a flavor. We need an egg, and we got plenty of those. We got that covered. Uh, two servings of vanilla keto chow. We got that. We got the big bag. Uh, another half a cup of sifted almond flour. I've got that. Coconut flour. Got that. Baking powder. Got that. Unsweetened almond milk. Ooh, I don't think I have that. We, we may have to go get that. We can go run to the store and get that. Either that or maybe we can use coconut milk. I don't know. Uh, icing. Two cups of powdered erythritol. I'm pretty sure we have that. Some warm water, vanilla extract, I've and got warm water. dark cocoa powder. Okay. It looks like it's a lot of steps though. But yeah. We're gonna we'll we'll try this today. Let's give it a try. Uh, so we're gonna try to make this today and then we're doing wings. Right now we have to go record some podcasts. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start cooking the wings. We're gonna make them in the oven. So first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then we're gonna put everything onto a cookie sheet. Okay, so I have a big giant old sheet pan. I usually use this for like just collecting grease and stuff. So I've got a cookie cooling rod. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this with some avocado oil. Uh, that just helps get everything to not stick. And then I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull over the old wings or not the old wings, the ones that were on the cookie sheet in the refrigerator. And I'm gonna start moving these over and you can see how dry these have gotten. All the skin has really been drying out, sitting in the refrigerator overnight, and that's gonna help really make these crispy. So I turned them over a little while ago, but we're gonna go ahead and move them all over to this side so that we can spray the uh, other um, cookie sheet. So again, they're pretty dry compared to uh, what they were yesterday. And we're just gonna go ahead and put these over here. And what I like to do is find the skin side and put the skin side up because that's obviously what we wanna crisp the most of. But right now we're just gonna move them all over and then we'll spread them all around. Now I wanted to show you the advantage of drying these in the refrigerator overnight. I decided I wanted to do one more package to make sure we have enough wings because sometimes these will shrink down. So I pulled another package 
out of the freezer and I just dried them off with a paper towel. So that is one that came out of the freezer, defrosted, and I dried it off this morning. And then if you take one of these other ones and look at the difference, see how this one is much drier than this one. So we're gonna cook this batch here in the oven and then I'm gonna cook this other batch here in my hand. We're gonna cook these in the air fryer and see what the difference is. Now we're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven at 350 degrees. And if you have a convection, you can actually turn your convection on. And again, we're looking at about 30 minutes, but we'll go ahead and check it in about 20. So we just finished filming a podcast before like I was doing my practicing. And uh, the podcast was the good, the bad, and the ugly for being a keto couple. Yeah. And there's some good, there's some bad, and there's some downright ugly, even in our relationship. Yeah. But one of the things that came up while we were talking was... When it comes to keto, sometimes you don't get that date thing. Like, you know, we watch like Anthony and Sarah and Sarah will come over and they'll have a date cooking in the kitchen, making cookies and all that kind of stuff. And with keto, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because our meals are pretty much beef and eggs. Right. And so it's go throw some stuff on the smoker and wait till it's done. So we can change it up. So we're going to change it up and we're going to just sit here and have a date with you guys while the wings are cooking. Thanks for coming along. And we're gonna to attempt to make these keto chow black and white cookies. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so no idea, never made them. This may be an epic fail. But that's all right. And Rachel is actually going to do the cooking here. Oh, now there. this is not guaranteed so it re easy Rachel can make it. I don't know, it's a lot of directions. We're gonna do it anyway. Okay, so in a large mixing bowl. That would be this. Okay, we're going to add one stick of butter, a half a cup of butter. Stick of butter. Ooh, wait. Oh, that was good. <laughs> okay, we're going to add in allulose. The recipe for this, by the way, is actually on the Keto Chub website. I found it. I don't know oh, if it's good. supposed to be there, but it is. So that was actually a resveratrol. So we're adding in a resveratrol and we are adding in allulose. And then we're going to beat that with the beater until it's light and fluffy. Light and fluffy. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so then you're gonna add vanilla extract and lemon extract. So you're supposed to do a half a teaspoon of each one, but guess what? We couldn't no find lemon it. extract and they don't have it any in any of the stores around here. So we're just gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla. Just won't have that little lemon hint. I'm, I'm okay with that. And then we need one egg. Oof. And then from there, you're going to beat until well combined. Then we need keto chow, two servings of vanilla. This is good because we don't use vanilla that often. No, we're usually reaching for, you know, other flavors. So this is a good base. And you should probably weigh it out, but not gonna bother. Two I'm scoops. I'm lazy. You're efficient. Okay, and then we're gonna add in coconut flour and almond flour. And again, recipe I'll leave linked down below. Not our recipe. Not our recipe. We're just doing it. Okay. And then, oh, and the baking powder. Okay. Don't forget that. And then go ahead and mix that well. Okay. Now we're supposed to stir in almond milk. So I would do this slow. Is it well mixed? I think so. Let me get the sides though. I'm afraid I'm losing batter up here. Again, I'm, I'm not a cookie maker. Maybe you are. I, yeah, I, I'm about hey, to. If you do this really well, 
I say what you do is we'll have you redo this. We have a full bag of vanilla and you could make 50 black and white cookies, but we'll make the white pink and you could do it for the baby I shower. I could do it for the baby shower? Let's try this. Mmm. Mmm. I actually just want to eat that. That tastes good. That tastes really good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this all in like this. And now, this is probably gonna be good timing because what we're supposed to do is put this in the refrigerator for 30 minutes and it's probably time to uh, have our wings. Mmm. Best part of date night. Well, not the best part. My glass is fogged up going into the oven. <laughs> okay. Looking good. Here we go. Look at those wings. Now the question is, did they stick? No, see, spraying it with uh, the avocado oil, so they really don't stick to the cookie sheet too much. So these are perfect. So we have the Primal Kitchen uh, Buffalo sauce. This stuff is really good. It's become our go-to sauce. And we have this G Hughes sugar-free sweet chili. This stuff is amazing. It does have sucralose in it, but I really, really like it. I think what we're gonna do is half and half. What do you think? Yeah, I'm up for it. What we're gonna do is just take our tongs and give these a little toss. I love that wing sauce. It is so good. Oh, there are some more wings in the, in the air fryer. So let's do this. Let's do another one. Two, I think there's like eight in there. Three, four. Okay, we have to do this right, otherwise there's arguments. Again, it's not all the better roses in a keto couple. So we gotta have to make sure they're the same size. One there, one here. We sound like we're here. very petty. But I know, but it's, it's just, gotta be fair. It's keeping the peace. What do you like better? Do you like the drum or do you like the flat? I want both. Okay, so I got the ones out of the air fryer. Now we'll throw these in here. I feel like there's a lot more of these for some reason. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. No, I am not measuring it. I'm not gonna worry about it. Toss it. Ooh, there's more flats on this side. Ooh, nice. Looking good. Man, do you want some more of this one? or Just, just a little nice? splash. Ooh, that's good. Well, that one's mine. Oh, okay. Hit Unless me. Unless you want me to get the, the extra ones. <laughs> okay, one more thing to add onto this plate. Pork belly. Pork belly, get your pork belly. Time to eat. Now, wait a second here. I well, see that I have one piece of pork belly and you have two bricks. Somebody ate like all the pork belly already. Who did that? I haven't had one piece of the pork belly yet. I want someone to be held responsible for this. That's not me there that actually go. did it. Actually. Now it's even. Wow. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. That may be the best pork belly smoke like a brisket that I've made. No wonder you've eaten all the pork belly. It's awesome. Okay, which one are we going with first? I recommend the buffalo. Mmm. Oh my God. We need to be making these at home. <laughs> Thanks Buffalo Wall Wings for making it so expensive. We're, we're just gonna cook them ourselves. Mmm. Really good. Why are we going to Buffalo Wild Wings? Good question. Well, because it used to be buy one, get one free, and it was cheaper than buying wings. Mm. That's what it was. Wow. These are smaller than Buffalo Wild Wings, but. Mm hmm. Mm. That is good. Here. That's sweet chili sauce, though. Oh, I'm going to dive into that right now. Mm. Okay. This one's sweet chili. It's good. Oh no. Yeah. It's really good. Mm-hmm. So don't why don't we 
turn the camera off while we eat this so I can eat these bones. Nobody wants to see us eat? No one wants to see me eat the bones. Okay, so we're gonna eat our wings, and then after we're done eating, we're gonna come back and work on the cookies some more. Okay. <sighs> Let the date continue. Those wings were good. They were really good. Okay, so it says now, when the dill is, dough is chilled, portion it into nine two ounce balls. You can use a balls. quarter of a cup <laughs> to measure each one out. So I guess we can start that way. So we'll just do a quarter of a cup just and then kind of roll them into balls just to see balls. what we... Yeah, great. How many do we have? We have four so far, four balls. I feel like we're gonna have a lot more. Five, uh, 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 five <laughs> balls. Hey, if this works, then I can actually get Cookie Monster stuff for Sesame Street. Oh. Who is your favorite Sesame Street character? Grover. Really? Yeah. I love Grover. Super Grover, specifically. What about you? Take a guess what my favorite character was. Did you was. like Oscar the best? I like Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> I did like Oscar the Grouch. I liked, um, I liked Snuffleupagus and Big Bird. And I liked Bert and Ernie. I, I liked, do like Bert and Ernie. I, I liked their friendship. One, two, some of these are a lot bigger than others. How many do we have? We One, have two, eight. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you have enough for nine? I think we barely have enough for nine. So we're gonna we're gonna I pull can out borrow. the we're gonna pour, pull out the scale. Or what happens? Here's another problem with being a keto couple. When you're both eating the same thing, what we'll do is. I'm going to cook these and I'm going to go, this one is mine. The big ones. And this one is right, yours. Right. It's like when you pull out a package and it says a serving size is one piece. Well, is that a broken piece or is that a whole piece? My piece is on the bottom. That's what I know. <laughs> I need to eat until I hit my piece. Okay. Let me grab a scale. One, so there's supposed two, to be two ounces, ounces but I mean, you know that's- nine. Yeah, but some of them are a lot bigger than the others. Okay. Okay, so let's just get an idea. Like, so this is a smaller one. That's 1.8. Okay. That's two ounces. So this sucker is going to be like... Two and a half. 2.2. You don't have to be this exact. We're just weird. 2.1. 1.8. This one looks big to me. 2.2. Where's the 1.8? 1 1.8. 1 2.0. Wow. Hey, I think we did pretty we good We did really here. good, actually. I'm impressed. I just want to lick the bowl. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. Okay. That is some good cookie dough. It's very good. Mm. Okay. Do you spread them out? So... Now you have to make them, and then you're gonna flatten them. Oh, okay. Oh, you know because what? it's only it's just you and I. So let's just you and I. So we got nine. Uh huh. I have a feeling like our pan's not big enough. How are we gonna flatten these? Like this? Just there you go. So it's supposed to be like an inch. So not too much. I feel like we screwed this up, but Probably. you know what? It's all right. Who cares? It's a date night. It's a date night. You did something together. That's what it's all about. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, they all weigh the same. Just some are going to be bigger. You know what that means, though? Some get more ice. <laughs> That's when we can get into, into trouble. OK, bake for 13 minutes, rotating the tray after eight minutes. I already have the oven preheating at 350 degrees. Okay, so while the cookies are baking, we're gonna do the icing. Okay, so allow the cookies to cool. To make the icing, sift your erythritol into a large bowl, add vanilla and warm water, and one tablespoon at a time, mixing after each addition. Add the water one tablespoon at a time. I don't think it's plugged in. You're I didn't turn it, I didn't unplug it. I think I might have. Okay. <laughs> Rachel. I didn't mean it. I mean, I just plugged it in. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, one tablespoon at a time. I'm not getting a tablespoon measure. The icing should get to the consistency of gravy. 
I think you're at the point now where you can turn it off. Is that the consistency of gravy? Um, it looks like the consistency of frosting. Yep. It tastes like vanilla. It tastes like a lot of vanilla. I think we added too much vanilla. I think so too. But that's okay. Yeah. We're gonna put half of it into another bowl. Oh, cause you gotta do a chocolate one. Up, oh, the cookie's gotta be turned around. We'll do it. So we gotta go into another bowl, roughly half without measuring it. <laughs> Joe really prides himself on not measuring. Because that's the best way to bake, right? I can eye things. It's a success. I think that that's pretty good. Pretty good. It'd we'll be good if it. we had two of the same size bowl. But that would help. That but would that's help. Right. Now we're going to put your cocoa powder in there and mix it and then add a teaspoon of warm water to thin it back to the proper consistency. If it's too thick, add more water. Now we don't, it calls for dark cocoa powder. We don't have dark cocoa powder. We just have cocoa powder. So. We're just gonna use what we got. I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Now it says, place the white icing in a disposal. Hey! You had more. <laughs> that's good. Chocolatey. Yeah, I would do just chocolate. <laughs> okay. Place the white icing in a disposable bag, piping bag, or a small plastic storage bag and cut the tip to create a small opening. On the flat side of a completely cool cookie. Oh, you got to turn it over to the flat side. Oh. Begin by piping a straight line down the center of the cookie and then pipe around one edge until you have a shape that like looks like a, a capital letter D. Yeah, I was going to say make a Fill D. Fill in the shape of the icing and smooth it slightly with a spatula. Continue until all the cookies are iced white on one side. Allow the white icing to set for five minutes and then repeat for the chocolate. Oh, that's how they do it. Wait a minute, let me try to. We're first of all using the wrong spatula. We just a mess. But are you having fun? I'm having fun, here. You are <laughs> It's everywhere. Okay, wait, we got more. Mm, very vanilla-y. We're gonna have like all of our sugar alcohols for the day before we for even the get week. a before we even get a cookie. Right. <laughs> Stand you up. Now we would not normally be licking the spoon if there were gonna be somebody else eating. Right. It. Somebody right now is typing in the comments. Wait a second. They just put their mouth on that spatula and now they're putting it back in the chocolate icing. That's right, but it's only us eating it. It's just us. You know we're gonna have brown and white cookies. Well, we don't have dark we don't cocoa dark powder, chocolate. but I'm not gonna go buy it just for this, and we wanted to make this today. Yeah. So you know what? I'm good. Oh no, that's not for that, that's for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't taste like the chocolate that you had on the chocolate, like, like black and white cookie. What it tastes like is um, hot chocolate. It does taste like it hot tastes chocolate. Like, it tastes like Nestle's Quick. Yeah. That's what it tastes like. Very much okay, so. Okay, so we're gonna wait for the cookies. Ooh. Ooh. The cookies are done. They grew a little bit. They did grow. Those look pretty good. Okay, so yeah, we have to let these cool here for two or three minutes because almond flour will fall apart when it's hot. Right. So you, if you try to do this, it's gonna bring them to a million pieces. So we're gonna let them cool and then we're gonna put them on a cooling rack once they are uh, cool enough to touch, and then we'll turn them over so the flat bottom is facing up. So we'll come back in like, I don't know, five minutes or so. So we're gonna let these cool a little bit long before we put the icing on, but I've got a perfect thing to do while we wait. <laughs> keto some... chow ice cream. Keto chow ice cream. Oh wait, am I the only one who does this with the creamy lid? So you take this off, and first thing you gotta do is take your finger and get all the ice cream. Is that mm. good? And then. Oh, dang, that's good. Mm. Yum. Now I'm noticing there is no mixin'. 
No. In this cream mate. So, pre beef butter bacon and egg. Yes. We, at least three or four times a week. Here we are being vulnerable. Would split a creamy ice cream, like right with dinner. Like eat dinner, split a creamy ice cream. So it's part of our meal. It wasn't like a two hour later dessert. No, totally fine. But we talk about things sneaking into your life, right? What ended up happening was we were putting mixins of, of granola in and it started off with one serving between the two of us. Then there was like, well, there's two of us. So then we it two was servings. one serving, hit the mix in button, put Rachel's bowl in, sprinkle some more on top, put another serving in, do a mix in for the bottom half right. for me, sprinkle more on top. And it got to the point where I think that there was more mixing than ice cream. Yes. So we're going to try to behave ourselves. And just eat the ice cream. And just eat the ice cream. We can do this. So here's, a, here's yeah. another place where as a keto couple, there could be arguments because there's no way to easily measure this out and make sure we're both getting the same amount. This is our first ice cream since, since August. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Ready? Dink. Welcome back. Oh. I'm sorry. This is delicious. Since since the creamy came out a year ago, we have not bought a keto friendly ice cream. We used to buy like the Rebel and stuff. Yeah. And I honestly have to say, I don't think that the those are better than this. And those all have not. like soluble corn fiber, but I think when it comes to flavor and comes to texture, nothing beats and us. everything else. I don't think there's anything better than a keto chow ice cream and it's clean ingredients and you're getting your vitamins and your nutrients and your electrolytes. I know that they've come down in price and then you've got Amazon Prime Day, one of those ones coming up this week, mm -hmm. right? Get on it. This would be a really good Christmas present to yourself if you haven't already purchased one. We gave a lot of them away last year. We did. We gave them away on our live streams mm -hmm. and then we, we gave one to John Paul for Christmas. We gave one to Becky for Christmas. Yep. Cause it's so good, right? And Spread the love for ice cream. Even if you have a family member who's not doing keto. They will love. They can make their own ice cream super simply or give them some keto chow and now all of a sudden they're gonna eat a healthier ice cream yeah. than the stuff that they're buying in the store, which isn't even real ice cream. They Go won't to the be store upset. and pick up a, a half a gallon of Briars and look at the number of ingredients in there. It's, it's not like, Milk, cream, sugar, no, and eggs. It's tons of nonsense. Mm. So we got to make a D. Right. So down the line, I feel like there's not going to be enough. Well, I can move it around with my spoon. Uh oh. I'm just going to let you do that. How many more do we need to do? You need to do two more. I'm gonna borrow frosting from these no, guys. No, we, we have four more. We're in trouble here. We got that, oh, okay. Professional cookie decorators, we are not. There We're is not. a lot more chocolate than there is There vanilla. is a lot of frosting on this counter. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do this better. Okay, I'm gonna do one at a time and then hand them to you. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Are they as pretty as getting them out of a bakery? No, but I feel like super accomplished. I mean, for somebody who is not a good baker, I feel like the recipe was pretty straightforward. The recipe was easy. And I feel like we came back with a product that isn't a complete Pinterest looking fail. Yeah. I think they're cute. Except for there's chocolate all over these. Which is Let's okay. do this. Let's put these into the refrigerator and maybe the icing will set because right now it's kind of liquidy. And yeah. black and white cookies are supposed to be like hard icing. Set. Okay. Wow. So I would say that they're a little bit flimsier than the black and white cookies that I remember. Right. Um, now they haven't been in the refrigerator long, maybe like five or 10 minutes. Uh, but now's the test. So chocolate or vanilla first or straight down the middle? I'm going straight down the middle, baby. We gotta dink it though. Dink. dink. Hmm. It's tasty, but I the think- The cookie tastes really good. But I think it needs to be crunchy. Okay. <clears throat> in some way. The cookie tastes really good. 
The chocolate frosting is the chocolate on point. The chocolate is pretty good. Vanilla. You think we over vanillaed? It's got a really strong cooling effect. Where's the your icing. Job? I'm wondering if it would be better if we used powdered allulose, which is not as sweet as erythritol, but that might be a good thing in this instance. Yeah. I'm not an erythritol person. It, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a strong cooling. Like it's not a burning cooling, but it's like putting a cooling mint in your mouth. Like you don't feel like a menthol, but it's definitely like you're putting an ice cube in your mouth almost. But here's the thing. I really enjoyed making them. It was really fun. Like the chocolate side, I think is like good. I think that it's a fun thing to do like an art project. I think if we did like, you know, draw art and you know, that wine and art type of class. Right. You may not necessarily hang that painting on the wall after you're done with it, but it was just kind of the experience of being together and sharing that. Some of it though is, maybe it's just me, but we haven't had sweet in a really long, the yeah. sweetest thing we've had is a keto brick or, um, an element or a relight. And that has been like overly sweet for right. me lately. So this is just like a sugar bomb in my mouth. So that could be some of it. But I really wonder if you used a powdered allulose, if it wouldn't be so overly powered sweet and not having that erythritol cooling effect. Worth a shot. But they're not, now the cookie, I think the cookie is on point. Like if you can do the cookie, try, can you get the cookie without having maybe scrape off some icing? The cookie is good. Very good. It's like, the cookie is like really good. Like I would like the cookies without the icing. Right. <laughs> Who would thought? In the past it would have been just like- just It'd be all icing. Icing and hold the cookie. Like I could definitely make those cookies and just not put the icing on it and I think they would be a huge hit. Like the uh, vanilla keto chow really changes the texture because I am not an almond flour cookie person. I would take just the cookie and put some keto chow ice cream in between <sighs> like the two cookies. Next video, next video, ice cream sandwich cookies. That, I'm all about it. That, <laughs> you're pretty smart. I'm a brilliant woman. Let us know down in the comment section if you made these. I do, I, I would like to remake them at some point with allulus and see if that really changes it Let's up. Let's try it. But I'm really excited about the cookie, but like, I'm with you, like this was just fun. It was different. Um, you, you guys saw a little insight to us soon, but it was fun. It was a fun Sunday evening date night instead of sitting and just watching TV and- Let us know in the comments down below, would you like us to do this again? Would you like to see more like a date night activity? Oh, you know what we can do? We have a whole recipe box of keto chow recipes. Uh huh. We can do like a blind, put your hand in, pull it out, and, and have you to have make to make whatever's wh on there. That could be a whole video series. I right? am in if you guys are in. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos. We have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent videos that I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we're sitting on the wrong side, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.